Hi, okay, so um, what I wanna look at in this video is a few different scenarios where we might start to have more than one particle and more than one spring. And uh, the thing that I really wanna emphasize here, which this is a like, really fantastic example of, so if you're not familiar with this project, I think it's worth me taking 30 seconds of this video just to point out to you the existence of Nokia Friends. So Nokia Friends is a project by Karsten Schmidt, you know, the creator of Toxic Libs. And what you can see here is, ah, it looks like this is a kind of network of a whole bunch of particles connected with springs, and there's kind of this like skeleton here. And you can see that skeleton. What is that skeleton for? <laughs> Skip ahead timing-wise. You can see here's a whole bunch together, right? It's for creating these cute little cuddly wonderful creatures that you just wanna, you know, be friends with and happy with and dance around uh, together with. Hello. Um, so, um, so here's the thing. I, I, um, there'll be a link to this video. You can watch it on your own. The point of what I'm talking about here is that we don't have to be so literal in the way that we think of these physics engines, right? We could design a box 2D. Even if we're thinking about box 2D, we could make this sort of circular body and put our own PNG with eyes and nose and little hair on it ourselves. We could also start to make structures, skeletons, out of you know, circles and lines, spring connections, et cetera. Like, for example, you know, what if we made a whole bunch of particles I don't know, I've gone off the deep end here, right? And then connected them in some arbitrary way, right? To make this kind of like bug-like creature with legs and antenna, but a bunch of cross springs to keep the center from like collapsing onto itself. But instead of drawing it this way, right? We drew a nice polygon with some colors and the te image texture and we put some furry hair here and we, we added all sorts, right? We can just use this as the behind the scenes skeleton for our structure. Another great example of a use of this is a project called Big Screams, um, which I will also include a link for, which uses Box2D as, as an engine to create these skeletons for these creatures. You know, it's an interactive system. You call in on your phone and you shout into it, and these creatures make all sorts of do crazy things. Anyway, boy, I explained that horribly. Uh, but anyway, you, you, you'll find it, and you'll like it, and you'll be inspired. Okay, so how do we even get to the point where we can do this? So I, I want to just look at a couple examples. So there's really three, there's a few different options here. Number, what's well, two options? I'm sure there's more options. But two options are, we can start sort of manually setting. We can make, let's make 20 particles. Here are all the locations we need. 15 springs to make all the connections. This spring is between P1 and P5, and this one's between P3 and P7. We could do that. We could also come up with some algorithmic way. So what I want to do is, uh, and again, this video is kind of short. I'm just going to show you a few examples and kind of look at the code a little bit, and maybe someday it'd be worth kind of like having a longer version of this. But I think th there's no like answer to this problem. What is your exciting idea, and how do you do it? you need to sort of kind of piece together the algorithm yourself, I guess. But <laughs> I'm here to help. So, um, so one, one scenario we can look at that I think is a good one to look at is what if we took just a whole bunch of particles in linear fashion and connected the first one to the second one, the second one to the third one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What would we get doing this? So this is really great for like jellyfish tentacle simulation. There's a great project. I better include that below too. too. I, I have this, this new system in mind, by the way. Stuff's gonna, I mean, it's not really, anyway, pop up as I'm talking that you can link to. It's gonna be really thrilling. I'm definitely gonna do it for this video. Um, uh, and uh, so you, it's great for jellyfish tentacles, a kind of string. What if you're making a balloon simulation with a dangling string? This could work really well for that. So let's take a look at how this could be done in Toxic Lives. So if I come back over here to my friends, goodbye friends, uh, I can go back to processing and we have, uh, I'm going to look at, this is now, I'm looking at example 5.11. So if I run this example and I made a few changes to it, you can see what is this, oh, that's weird, those aren't the changes I made, but uh, we're just going to live with this right now. Um, you can see there's a whole lot of circles and there's lines going across the circles. So what I want to emphasize to you is these, this is exactly what we did before. It's just particles and springs. But remember, we can choose to draw it in any number of ways we want. I can go into this chain class, which is drawing, oh, right, this is so weird. I totally changed this before I started this example. But um, it was just drawing all these circles and I can take them out and I can just connect all the particles with vertices. So in this example, there is an array list of particles, right? This chain object is essentially just an array list of particle objects. What are these particle objects? 
just like what we had before. But look, with inheritance, we're, we get to add variables. So now our Verlet particle also has a radius of four. So if we look at this, it's super exciting. And um, we have this uh, display method down here. Ah, OK, so, um, but the chain class, uh, Maybe I might redo these the other next time, but OK, edit that out. Um, OK, the chain class is just an array list of particles. And we have to figure out how are they spaced out. So we need a total length. We need a rest length. We need to make a spring for each one. One of the things that we can look at here is what are we doing? We're making a spring between each particle and the previous particle. So as we're counting through this array list, we can i is our current particle, i minus 1 is our previous particle, make a spring between current particle and previous particle. If then when we go to draw them, we just draw them as a connected series of lines, what we get is this nice stringy looking like thing. So you can see that even though there's all these particles there, we don't have to draw the particles. We're just drawing it as a line. We could vary the line thickness. We don't have to make it a line. We could make it a curvy thing. There's so many things you can do. You should remember that you don't have to literally visualize the physics. You can use the physics as this underlying engine for your motion and design whatever design you want on top of that. So this is a nice example you can take a look at to create kind of like a soft string pendulum. Um, another example that we can briefly take a look at here is, and we looked at this in the first video, is what if we take all of those particles and springs, and instead of just connecting them with a line, we connect them, uh, we, we connect them in a grid-like pattern. So if you look at any image processing example, you say for every x, <laughs> right, for every y. Let's look at every pixel x and every pixel y. We're doing the same thing here. Let's make a particle for every x and a particle for every y. For every particle, connect it above, connect it down, connect it to the left, connect it to the right. So um, if we kind of look through the code, we can see one of the things that I wanted to mention about this example is if we so choose, we can also write our own class that extends Verlet Spring 2D. So here we have a, our own connection class. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to have a display method for those connections, which here is just as a line. So this is a nice thing you can see. Our particle extends Verlet particle. We're not drawing any of the particles. We're actually not calling that display method. Instead, we're just displaying all the connections to see that mesh. A great exercise for you, if you would like one, is to try to render this not as just a connected lines, but see if you can make it um, Make it uh, quad, each, each as kind of quad uh, a polygon so that you could put an image texture on it. So what if you could make a blanket that has, you know, a sunflower on it or something like that? Um, so this is another example. So um, another thing. So another thing that I think is useful to think about with these types of uh, uh, projects is um, you could think about doing something called a force directed graph. So what is a force directed graph? So <laughs> I don't really feel like answering that question right now, but I am, I am making this video, so I'm going to kind of keep going. It's hot, tired. These aren't going very well, but I'm doing my best. OK, so um, what is a force-directed graph? So let's just think of a scenario where you have a world, and you put a whole bunch of stuff in that world. And what if those things have relationships to other things, and you want them to arrange themselves in some pattern that visualizes the data behind those relationships? A classic example of this is think of any social network. You have friendship connections to, these are all the people in a social network, and this person is connected to this person, this person is connected to this person, this to this person, this to this person, this, right? You could imagine this could be the set of connections. What if the strength of those springs, the rest length of those springs were tried to other properties, location, gender, you know, closeness of the friendship, right? Maybe we don't want to get into that, right? If you can, what you have are particles and connections. And if the data, if what you're visualizing is data about connections between entities, could you map that data into the properties of spring objects? And if you, if you do that, you can just plop everything in, set up the spring relationships, and let the graph arrange itself according to forces. Um, and so um, you know, it probably would be smart for me to make an example that's with actual data. And maybe that's the exercise for this video. Or now I'm thinking of my own personal exercise that someday I will do to make a better example. But what I have for you that you can take a look at are two examples. Um, these are 512 and 5. Um, Actually, 512, and then one of them is an exercise, so exercise 515. So this example just shows a really simple scenario where 
the, it makes a random set of particles, and every particle is connected to every other particle with uh, springs with certain uh, rest length and um, rest lengths and strengths. Now, what's interesting about this is every time I quick hit end, the graph will arrange itself into some kind of nice symmetrical pattern. I'm calling this a graph. But the, the particles, it happens very, very quickly, are given random locations initially. So this kind of arrangement happens according to those forces. It's a very purely symmetrical arrangement because I'm just making random particles. Every particle is connected to every other particle. But what if those connections weren't just perfectly symmetrical based on some data? Um, that would be interesting to look at. And you can look at a second example, which is exercise 515, which just takes it a little bit of a step for a little bit of a step further. There are a bunch of these clusters that have their internal connections, and those clusters are connected externally to other clusters with different kinds of springs. And you can start to see how this, this kind of graph is, I'm calling it a graph, but this sort of system is arranging itself into some kind of stable pattern after a period of time. And one thing that's interesting about this is I personally think it's, it's sometimes more interesting to look at this visually if you hide the actual particles. And you can kind of just look at here, we're just visualizing those connections. Or vice versa, we can hide the connections and only show the particles. So you can see th there's nothing in this program and there's no kind of leadership here saying like the particles should arrange themselves into this pattern. There's just a bunch of particles with a set of connections. So I would say as an exercise to you, for you, you have kind of two choices here. One is design a creature or some entity, use springs and particles to be the skeleton for that creature. That's one idea. Another idea is um, actually, um, is actually uh, um, use this simple cluster or this example as a model for building a force-directed graph, but pick some real data, whether you kind of make that data up or hand-write it into a text file or hard-code it or actually get it from some API, um, but see how that works for you as a, as a project. OK, so uh, great. I think this wasn't as horrible as it was for a period, period of time in the middle, and I've enjoyed, I'm enjoying doing this, and so um, uh, that's, that's something, I suppose, and I will um, talk to you later. I don't care. I press this button. Goodbye.